Okay, it's time to talk about one of my very favorite parts of the UDK interface, the content browser. Now, I'm going to open the content browser by clicking on its button located here inside the toolbar labeled Open the Content Browser. You can also go under View, down under Browser Windows, and choose Content Browser, whichever way works for you. Now, when you open this, it may seem a little bit intimidating if you've never looked at it before. There are a lot of buttons, a lot of icons, a lot of check boxes, things you can type in, but don't worry. Once you get the hang of what each of these basic areas do, not only will you find that the content browser is very easy to use, but you'll find there's a lot of different ways that you can use it. You can kind of tailor your own workflow to exactly how you want to make use of this. But first, what is the content browser? Well, this is where you're going to go to find any exterior assets that you want to place in your level. And by exterior assets, I mean things like textures or static meshes or like 3D models, basically, any skeletal meshes, any particle systems, anything that was created either through some external source like Photoshop or 3ds Max or Maya, or objects that were created with some of UDK's internal editing systems. Basically, any object that is not already coded into the engine itself is all available right here inside your content browser as an asset. Now, again, if it looks a little bit complicated at first, really it's just until you start to understand what each one of these panels are. So let's just break it down into some simple terms. Here on the left-hand side, we have the source panel. This allows us to control where it is we're looking for assets. Just keep that in mind. The left-hand side is really all about where we're looking. Here in the center, we have the filter panel. This allows us to control what it is we're looking for. We can type in a specific name of something, or we can just click on a checkbox to search for an object type. So we have what we're looking for, and on the left, we have where we're looking. On the right-hand side, we have our Tags panel. This allows us to take any asset and apply a tag to it. So, for instance, we could have a tag for any building pieces that we use, things like brick walls and stairs and things like that, so that at any point, we can search by tag and tell the content browser to say, hey, show me everything that could be used for buildings, and it'll pop up because of the tags. We can create our own tags, we can add tags to assets, we can remove them. It's kind of like having your own little label gun, and you can just click labels all over everything. Any object can have as many tags as you like, and we'll talk more about that a little later. Now, here in dead center, we have kind of our results panel. This shows us all of the different assets that can be seen based on the filter, which is what we're searching for, and the source, which is where we're looking. It'll just show us all of the different icons for the assets that we have available. Now, right now, I'm not searching for anything, and if you click on the All Assets button, this is really just a great big, huge list of all of the different assets to which we have access, and it just goes on and on and on. But right here at the bottom, we can control how these assets are shown to us here inside the result panel, so I do want to go over this real quick. Now, because this is at the bottom of my screen, it's a little hard to see the tooltip for it, so what I'm going to do is kind of shrink down the content browser just a little bit, and slide it up here into the air, and I guess I'll just stretch it out sideways a little bit. In fact, you'll notice on the left and right hand sides of the content browser, you have these little tiny white arrows. These allow you to collapse the tag panel and the source panel to get those completely out of your way. So let's just take a look at this bar underneath our results area, where we can switch to different types of views. Now by default we have our thumbnails view, so if I give this a little bit more room, this is the default setting. We can switch this to a horizontal split view where we have a list at the top, so the actual list of assets, and then the icons at the bottom. We can do a horizontal split view where we have a list on the left and our icons on the right. We can just do a list view. So if you just want to see a list, personally, I like the icons. It makes me happy. So you just have some hybrid views. You can have a list. You can split the view horizontally, vertically, or just have your icons. This is probably my favorite. Maybe I'm just kind of a visual person. That's how it works. Now, we can control the scale of these icons. You have a little scale bar here. You can click and drag this. And as we drag right, we imp increase the scale. As we drag left, we decrease the scale. Pretty cut and dry how that works. If you zoom in too far and you're like, wow, I need to really zoom back, you can just click reset, and that'll set everything back to 100%. Uh, now, you can change your thumbnail size. By default, this is set to 128, but you can crank it up to 256. You can crank it up to 2048 if you like. And you have some huge icons, which won't even fit in our screen. But we'll set that back down to 128. 
And you can sort by name, you can sort by type, tags, path, even by their date added, and choose whether you want to see an ascending or descending result. So it's a great way for you to be able to control what it is you see here inside your result panel. Now, granted, in most cases, you'll find yourself just setting this area down here at the bottom once, and then you'll just kind of leave it like that forever. So I wanted to go ahead and get that part out of the way. Now, the other panels, being your source panel, your filter panel, and your tag panel, really all kind of warrant some individual discussion. So uh, we will be talking about those a little separately. However... Before we end off this video, I do want to take a second and just give you kind of a general workflow as to how you can start using the content browser without having to know what everything is. Again, all you have to do is keep in mind what these panels are for. The filter panel controls what you're looking for. So let's decide that we want to put in some static meshes. As a matter of fact, I'm going to close the content browser and let's open up a level. Let's go to file, open, and let's grab VCTF Sandstorm. And let's just bring the camera down here close to the ground. It doesn't even really matter where. Just maybe this kind of level surface over here so we can play around for just a little bit. I'll maximize my viewport, and then let's reopen the content browser. Now, let's say I want to drop some static meshes in here. So the first place my eye should go is to the filter panel, where I can say, hey, look, I want to search for static meshes. So we'll go ahead and check that. Now, what kind of static meshes do I want? Well, let's, as I mentioned earlier, we could be searching for building parts. So let's just type in building. And here's a list of anything that may include the word building in its name, path, tags, or type. And we get some objects here. So let's grab S, L, T, buildings, S, M, bunker, sup, A, 2, which is a really complex name. I'm just going to select it right here. Now we have a couple of different ways we could place this in the level. With it selected, we could do it the hard way or the easy way. We could close out the content browser with that object selected. And I'll show you the hard way first so that you'll understand how cool the easy way is. I'm going to right-click here on the ground. We're going to come down to Add Actor. Now, I have to load that static mesh into memory. So we're going to say Load Static Mesh, and then there's the great big name of the static mesh. As soon as I do that, we get another submenu with Add Actor. And now we can go all the way to the top and add this as a static mesh. That was great. We only had to click, what, like 17 times to make that happen. But it works, and it's kind of the, the older-fashioned method for placing objects into your level. If you've been using Unreal Editor for a while, you're probably at least semi-used to that workflow. But there is an easier way. So let's open up the content browser again. I'm going to go ahead and restore it down to something fairly small, and I'm going to slide it kind of off the screen... Now, if you have a dual monitor set up, it's very cool to take your content browser and just fill up a second monitor with it. But check this out. You can see that static mesh here over inside the content browser. I'm just going to drag and drop. Boom. And I can place static meshes right here inside my, my level just by dragging and dropping. Very, very quick and easy. It's a great way to work. And this doesn't just work for static meshes. Particle systems, materials, they can all be dragged and dropped right out of the content browser. And all we did is we started off by saying, all right, well, I want static meshes and I want building parts, found what I wanted and just dragged it in. That's a really easy way to work. Now, as we move forward through these videos and you learn about these different panels of the content browser, you may come up with different ways to use the content browser that kind of appeal to your specific workflow. But for now, let's go ahead and end the video here and then we'll take a closer look at each one of these panels. Yes, yes, yes.